I, teen female, am my dad's affair baby. My mom didn't know he was married and broke it off when she found out, but she was already pregnant. She decided to have me and has always been a great mom. Many of my friends don't get along with their moms, but mine is cool and I wouldn't trade her for anyone. My dad takes me out on the weekends to do things and visits on holidays, but I've never lived with him or anything. When I was younger, he had to take me to his house for a few hours once when my mom was sick. His wife yelled at him and I had to stay in a bedroom away from her because she was so mad. My mom explained the cheating when I was older, and I realized how weird the situation was compared to friends with divorced parents. I have feelings about it, but he's my dad so I try not to think about it much. I know my dad's wife hates me and is the reason I can't see him more, so yeah, she has a reason to be mad at him, but also, screw her. So a couple of months ago, my dad asked if I would like to spend weekends with him. I said I'd be okay with it if it wasn't at his house. He said his wife wants me to come and she's had a change of heart. It sounded really sus, so I said no. Then this weekend, she wanted to come to have lunch with my dad and me. She said she realized how important I am to my dad since they can't have kids now and that she'd like to make up for it all and be my stepmom if I let her. It made me mad because she's made it hard to see my dad my whole life and now she wants to be nice. I might be the idiot because I told her that if she can't have kids, that's karma for how she treated me and she's never going to be anything but my dad's wife. She started crying and my dad told me later that it was a terrible thing and I needed to apologize. My mom said that she put me in an unfair situation and I should probably avoid talking to her right now because she's having to deal with infertility and hasn't really gotten over things. Am I the idiot? I feel like she kinda deserved it. Eh, I tried to screw your daddy for years but since that didn't work I guess you can work. Darling, you are not the idiot, you were being set up. They set you up and their little plan failed and exploded in their faces. You were treated very poorly for years and suddenly, oh never mind we're good now. No, never, not ever. People think, I'm sorry erases all the evil they did. It doesn't. What it does is clear the slate so they can do it again. You dodge the again because, sure as heck, that woman will change her mind again. She said she realized how important I am to my dad. Translation, now that I know I can't have kids with your dad, I want to sweep all the crappy things I did to you under the rug and use you as a good enough consolation daughter. She didn't even apologize. She can't flip a switch and expect the relationship to magically be repaired. And while what you said was harsh, it was no harsher than how she treated you for years. Look, to be fair, the wife has every right to be upset that her husband had a child with another woman. Like seriously, she is human and has feelings. Her needing time to come to terms with her husband's cheating is perfectly normal. OP doesn't know for a fact that she kept the dad away. He could have done so because he thought his wife wanted that. Maybe she just personally couldn't look at him and be constantly reminded of her husband's infidelity. That doesn't mean he couldn't go and see his kid without the stepmom. I think everyone's the idiot here. Did you miss the part where the wife made him shut OP in a bedroom so she wouldn't have to look at her? Are you for real? I don't care how upset you are about any situation. You do not lock up a child in a bedroom, or anywhere else for that matter. Especially a child who was likely already distressed because their mom was so sick they couldn't take care for them at the moment. And in that situation, where was the father supposed to bring the child? It wasn't a planned vacation or visit, it was an emergency. He should have taken his daughter to a hotel or his parents and made it a fun vacation. He should not have expected his wife to look after his affair baby in their house. And if he truly was that clueless, he should have immediately left with his daughter once his wife started screaming. I mean, he is her father. If she was locked in a bedroom, he's responsible for that too. OP, you are a slight idiot, mainly because you're blaming your dad's wife when your dad is the one in control of seeing and protecting you. His wife was a victim of your dad's affair too. I'm a 40-year-old female with a 40-year-old boyfriend and this will be our third year as a couple. I make more money than he does but we're both doing okay financially. Every year my birthday is about a month before my boyfriend's. For his birthday I usually plan a nice dinner out, get reservations and a babysitter, and then get him a nice gift. He enjoys sports and concerts so tickets to a game or a concert in a nearby city are always purchased months beforehand. I'll also line up and pay for dinner and hotel with a concert or sports game, so it's kinda like two birthday celebrations. However, on my birthday, I assume he forgets in the morning because he says nothing, then comes home and asks me where I want to eat. So obviously it has to be a place that doesn't take reservation and does take kids. Then he gives me a small gift, flowers and a necklace from Amazon one year, a fuzzy robe and blanket year two, and calls it good. 
So after my birthday this year, when we ate out last minute and I received a similar gift, I decided to sell the concert tickets and just do a similar birthday for him. I asked him where he wanted to eat the night of his birthday, took him out to eat there, no kids, and gave him a small gift, a new wallet and tie. He looked confused when opening his gift, and now he says he's really disappointed we're not taking a fun little trip together for his birthday like we normally do. I said I'm tired of putting in more time, effort, and significantly more money into his birthday when he barely seems to remember mine. It started a big argument. He says to me, I'm never good enough. So I effectively ruined his birthday, and I feel terrible about that. Am I the idiot? Edit, it's hard for me because whenever we talk about me not feeling his effort in the relationship, it blows up into him saying, I'm never good enough for you, and then an argument ensues. So I thought maybe actions would communicate better. Clearly, that idea of mine was a terrible one, though. Not the idiot. You scaled back your birthday celebrations and treats to his level of planning and performance. Fair play. If he steps up his game for your next birthday, you will for his. If not, not but it would help if you had an actual conversation with him. I can't imagine being upset over something like this for a few years and never telling my partner or talking to them about what's bothering me. While others have told you you need to communicate more, you are communicating by making his birthday special. He knows exactly how you feel on your birthday. Mirroring his behavior isn't petty. It opens the door for productive conversation. The ball is in his court now. Either he will continue his behavior on your birthday, knowing exactly how it makes you feel and exactly what the result will be next year on his, or he'll change. You did the right thing. I agree. What conversation was needed? You're modeling his skills or lack of skills. That's a conversation he will remember. It's absolutely exhausting to keep having to spell these things out. You already asked for more effort in the relationship. Until something changes, you can't keep giving 100% to someone who's only giving 50. He's being selfish about the whole damn thing. I recently proposed to my now fiancé and we've started planning the wedding. We don't want to make a big fuss and have a big wedding or anything like that. We're trying to keep it simple. However, I was dismayed that when my fiancé made her appointment at the dress store, she didn't invite my mum. She's invited her mum, her nan, her grandma, her sister and her best mate. I'd hoped that my mum would be included. I asked my fiancé about it and she said it's normal to only invite those you're close to and that's what she wants for her appointment. I know my mom would be excited to help plan the wedding, however my fiancé has shut her out of the planning and any attempt she's made to try and join in or help. My mom is disappointed, and I hate seeing that. She raised my brother and I alone after our dad left us. This is the only chance she'll have to be involved in one of our weddings or to go dress shopping with a future daughter-in-law. My brother is gay, he married his husband as soon as it was legally allowed and therefore he didn't have a traditional wedding or any guests. They just went and immediately got married with no formalities. My mom didn't have a chance to be involved in my brother's wedding, mine was her last chance. Am I wrong for thinking my fiancé should invite my mom to dress shopping and allow her to help plan the wedding? My mom is disappointed that she's omitted and will have no role in the wedding beyond a regular guest. My brother says I'm wrong. However, he and his husband didn't have to deal with this when they were married, because theirs happened so quickly. My fiancé and I don't want children, my brother has a daughter and my mum suggested that my niece be the flower girl. I thought this was a good idea, but my brother said it's not up to our mum and if we don't make his daughter a flower girl, it won't bother him and his husband, and not to bring up his daughter being a flower girl to my fiancé. My fiancé doesn't know about the flower girl issue, however she says I need to listen to my brother and his husband regarding her dress shopping appointment. My mum is disappointed and feels shut out. My fiancé gets upset if I bring this up and she doesn't want to change her dress shopping appointment or allow my mum to help with anything. Am I wrong for bringing it up? It's causing tension between us. Why don't you involve your mother in your stuff? You are the idiot for insisting and not listening to the first no. It's your wedding too, so you obviously should have a voice when it involves something for you or yourself. Not when it's her dress shopping. You don't get to tell her how to enjoy her dress shopping moment. She wants an intimate moment with the people she's closest to. If your wife isn't comfortable with her like that, having your mum there can put a damper on things. They might have to watch what they say or be more reserved. Your fiancé is entitled to private conversations and moments with her family and friends. So are you with yours. So invite your mum to shop with you. You could ask about the flower girl thing, but is it what you want for your wedding or do you just want to make your mom happy? I agree, you can insist on a dance with your mom, 
You can even do a non-traditional walk down the aisle with her. You can give your mom a tribute in your speech. It is also your wedding, but the dress and dress shopping is the bride's choice. Your brother is right that it isn't up to your mum. Pushing this will create animosity between your future wife and mum, or you won't have a wife. And I hate to have to say this, but just because your mum was a single parent does not mean that she gets to override everyone else's wishes, or that you get to override them for her. Especially at an event that is not about or for her. End of story. If you think that's acceptable, you need to look at how enmeshed you are with your mum, because that's not how it works when you're a grown-up. My sister Sarah is married to James. James has three children with his late wife Zara. The kids are tween boy, girl twins and a pre-tween boy. Their mom died six weeks after the youngest was born. Sarah and James met a year later, moved in together a year after that and married five years ago. Sarah gets along really well with her stepkids and they love her. But Sarah is very insecure regarding her place in their lives. She wanted to adopt the kids but they didn't want it. None of the kids call Sarah mom, they do love her though and that's very clear. There is no, you're not my mom, you can't tell me what to do going on, but they only ever use mom for their mom. The kids look very like Zara. The kids love being told that and they love talking about it. It makes them light up when they hear about their mom, but their reaction is super special when people mention how much they look like Zara. Sarah hates it. She's tried to suggest the kids look sort of like her, and the kids think she's silly when she does that, and they've told her that before but in a very soft way. The kids spend time with Zara's family, and sometimes James and Sarah are involved, but not often. It bothers Sarah that they're not more enthusiastic about her. It bothers her that they never refer to her as the kid's mom and will ask the kids how dad and Sarah are or will tell them to get dad and Sarah. She's made attempts over the years to become part of Zara's family, and they've never heard of her. Sarah really dislikes her and is questioned why they don't embrace her. She doesn't like that the kids attend the school where Zara is She also wrote them cards for when they graduate, get married, have babies, etc. She wrote some letters too for times they struggle. The kids love reading them to people when they get a new one. Sarah hates those letters. The kids have picked up on Sarah hating their mom being mentioned. They told me as much. Sarah is now pregnant and the adoption topic was brought up to the kids again. James told them it would mean that if something happened to him, they would stay with Sarah and their new sibling, a sibling they are excited about. The kids still didn't want it. Then Sarah fought with one of James's friends, who told her she needed to stop competing with Zara. Sarah then came to me and started ranting about how unfair that was and how people should be more understanding of what it's like to be living in Zara's shadow. I pointed out that the kids love her and couldn't that be enough. She told me that was a weird thing to say and asked if I agreed with James's friend. I told her it feels like she competes with Zara and that it's unhealthy. My sister lost it and told me I meant to be more supportive than that and more understanding. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Sarah is going to end up making those kids resent her because they're going to start feeling smothered by her resentment of their mother. The fact that she tried to say they looked like her, she couldn't stand them having their favorite connection to their mother, is awful. Sarah would benefit from therapy. It sounds like she's fortunate to be in the situation she's in, but if she doesn't learn how to manage her jealousy, she could destroy it. Does your sister want to rub a stamp for her feelings or to try and find a constructive way of addressing the issues? It sounds like she wants the former, which will not accomplish the latter or otherwise end well for her. I bet anything this will get a lot worse with the pregnancy. She is turning into an evil stepmother. Why isn't James addressing this? The baby will be the bomb in Sarah's relationships with her stepchildren. She raised them for the majority of their lives and wanted to be their mom, and now she's having a baby where she is the mom. The kids decide that she isn't their mom and that's their choice, but they're gonna notice the difference in how she treats her child. This all should have been talked about in family therapy, and James is a crap father for not insisting on that happening before the baby was conceived. James needs to knit this crap before the baby arrives. He's addressing it in the sense that he is with my sister in trying to get the kids to agree to be adopted. But that's about all he's addressing. I don't think he has a problem with the rest, maybe 